All right, as you saw in the title, we are going to be starting all of our lawn care equipment today. It is right around 30 degrees, pretty cold outside, but it is March and they are ready for their tune up before April hits. We are starting our lawn care services the first week of April. So without further delay, let's get right into it. I also want to mention real quick that we only use ethanol free fuel when we store our equipment. And I understand that uh, most of these uh, pieces of equipment that we own have plastic tanks so we do fill them up all the way prior to storing them and we do not add any type of sea foam or any fuel additives we strictly run ethanol free uh, in our lawn care business so with that being said if you do have a metal gas tank on any of your pieces of equipment mainly you'll see them on older lawn mowers and snow blowers if you do have a metal gas tank i would recommend highly recommend you drain your fuel system all the way prior to storing uh, your uh, equipment at the end of the season. Let's start off by putting all of the two stroke equipment on the floor just to kind of line them up and show you guys what I all that I have. Okay, and here is basically everything with a two stroke engine. Now this does not include any of my attachments that I have over there, but let's recap what we have here. We have a BR700 backpack blower, we have a steel HS56 hedge trimmer, a steel HS45 hedge trimmer. We have in the front a BG86C, SH86C, and another BG86 leaf blower. Hey, look at that. We got a MSA 200C. Obviously that will more than likely start. Uh, we will check the battery condition as well. We got an MS271. On the right side, we have a steel FS90R. We have a KM131R running no attachment right now. And we have a KM56RC. And again, do be advised, we did not start any of these machines excluding the chainsaw. We did run the chainsaw about a month ago during a windstorm that knocked down a few trees. But all of these pieces of equipment have not been started for about five months. So they all have ethanol free fuel, running steel ultra, ultra HP oil, full synthetic, that silver can that you guys see at the steel dealerships. And I'm gonna be surprised if all of them start, but we'll see how well ethanol free fuel does hold up. I'm also gonna go ahead real quick and grab the two push mowers that we run as well. Here we got our two push mowers. These have definitely been sitting for five months. Obviously we do not need to use them in the winter time. First one's a Toro Turfmaster HDX, running a Kawasaki FJ180V engine. And the second one is your basic Toro Time Master with the Toro Chinesium engine as well. And last but not least, sitting in the trailer, we have the Hustler. This is the Raptor SDX. It is a residential model and it is equipped with a Kawasaki FR691V engine. So let's try this one out first, see if it'll start. Again, sitting for five months with ethanol free fuel in it. And I believe it has a full tank. Yeah, it has a full tank of gas. Let's just see if it'll start and we'll go on from there. Okay, two things I suspect the battery might be dead or it's gonna start and smoke a bunch. I'm not too sure. Let's try to, let's see what we come up with. All right. So choke out and we are gonna fire it up. Throttle all the way, push forward. Okay, so it started great. It did smoke just a tiny bit, which is fine. It cleared out. 
and it looks like we do have a flat tire on the front left side that'll have to be fixed all the other tires seem to be good so yeah five months just sitting with ethanol free fuel in it not treated at all there is the startup of the raptor sdx now let's go on to the push mowers all right the kawasaki is first let's go ahead and turn the fuel on and set it all the way to choke now let's go ahead and pull it over see how many pulls it'll take to start this machine whoa what happened what just happened did we break something okay that was weird real quick that machine is literally brand new it's been used right around i'd say five six times and for some reason the recoil little claws weren't coming out when i was pulling on the recoil maybe it was frozen i don't know i just opened them up by hand and now they open up so let's go ahead and try to continue okay i lost count of the pull but we'll more than likely go back on the video and see how many pulls uh we can continue with so again choke gas is on let's go ahead and pull it over Choke. Ah, oh. need to let it run on choke for a little bit. Oh, are you kidding me? Would you look at that? Did smoke up just a little bit, as you saw probably in the video. Found a way to cheat the system. Get yourself a really thin screwdriver and go through this hole and you will more than likely find the Paul head and you can simply flick it up just a little bit and it'll catch. All right, let's try it for the third time. Let's try full throttle. Nope, choke again. Oh. All right, let's let it run on choke for a little bit. So you probably can't see it on camera, but it is smoking just a little bit right now. Let me try to zoom in. Really hard to see on camera, but it is smoking up just a tiny bit and it's still going. Let me go ahead and face it away from the shop. Sounds like it's running good, not sputtering or anything. It did for, for a minute there in the beginning, but seems like it's running good. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, let's turn it off. So, what did we learn today? We learned that Kawasaki recoils are completely trash when it is 30 degrees outside, but I can kind of give it to them. No one's gonna mow at 30 degrees, but fortunately we did have to mess with the paws a little bit, took off the recoil twice, and then we found a solution, just stick a uh, thin screwdriver through the guard there, and you can reach the paw and open it up manually, and then that will unfreeze both of them somehow, I don't know. Anyways, Toro ran great. I mean, it did start for 30 degrees. It started to smoke a lot, a little bit, and then after about 30 seconds, it did clear up. So we got that running. Let's go ahead and try the Tie Master. Hopefully we won't have any problems with the recoil.
All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and fire it up. This is a auto choke, so there's no choke. It's just a pull to start it. And sometimes you have a on switch or a key switch. Make sure that key switch is on. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Really sticky recoil. I'm gonna have to lube it up. We are having recoil issues today. All right, come on. Okay, we still got the gas in there. Should have checked that in the first place, but. All right. Wow. This one's taking longer than the Turf Master. Hopefully the auto choke is working. I'm moving it a little bit. Oh boy. I'm really tempted to spray some carb cleaner into that intake, but we're not going to do that today. Okay, I'm sweating from pulling. I think that was around 30, I do not know. I was not keeping count. We'll have to go back to the tape to see how many it was. But wow, was it the auto choke that was giving us a hard time? I think it was. That's why this Kawasaki started earlier than the, or it took less time or less amount of pulls to start it over the Toro. I think it's because of the manual choke versus auto choke. But let me know in the comments down below what you think about them. All right, now time for the two strokes. Let's go ahead and start off with the backpack blower. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and make sure we do have fuel. Still in there. Did not leak out or anything. Go ahead and set it to choke and prime it until you feel that the primer bulb is full of gas which it is. Let's go ahead and see how many pulls it'll take. Pretty solid, that's good. So recap, ran solid, only about two to three pulls and it fired right up. Again, this one probably has been sitting for also, you know, five months. We haven't used it since fall cleanups. 
But again, has a manual choke prime. I think that aided with the start. And again, we only run ethanol free fuel. And for the two strokes, we do mix 50 to one with steel ultra two cycle uh, oil, full synthetic. All right, now time for the blowers. We got the BG86. Now, one of these, I believe the SH86 has really bad bearings and you'll hear it when it, if it starts. So let's go ahead and try to see if we have fuel in this BG86. Let's bring you down a bit, fire it up. And uh, actually let's see if it has fuel first and then we'll fire it up. It does have fuel, so it should fire up. Oops. Okay, there's a choke. Okay, primer worked. Now let's try to fire it up. Okay, still cold, but it fired up, which is all we care about at the moment. Sounds like it is running a little bit rough, but so this one's brand new for last year. This has been hardly used. Just got a lot of um, surface dust on it, but let's go ahead and check for gas. Does have the fuel in there still. So let's go ahead and fire this one up. Prime it up three times is good. Just make sure that uh, bulb is full of fuel and let's see if it'll start. Idles way better than the old BG86 that we have. Again, it is you know fairly new, so I'll give it to the uh, condition that it's in of starting and idling a lot smoother. And throttle response is definitely incredible. So I could see why a lot of landscapers like to buy newer blowers rather than throwing parts and uh, paying for repairs for their older blowers. So uh, let's go ahead and check the condition, uh, the fuel, see if it's in here. There's a lot of fuel in there. Now this one I have definitely not touched for over, I'd say, I'd say like eight months. I mean, I've never, I rarely had to use this one. So I would, I would highly doubt that it'll start and more than likely have some kind of carb issue. But um, yeah, this one's, let's just say this has been sitting for about eight to 12 months. So we primed it, has fuel in the primer bulb. Let's go ahead and fire it up or see if it'll fire up. You heard those blown bearings though? Wow.
Okay, so runs pretty rough, honestly. This is why I don't use this unit here. I have better ones that I like to operate, but this is a good backup, backup, backup if I ever need one. So we'll put this aside. Did fire up, surprisingly. I thought that one was the only one that uh, will have the least chance of starting up. HS45, brand new. This has been used only a few times for a few jobs. So we are gonna try to fire it up and let's not fire it up on the rubber. Let's go ahead and put you a little bit closer here. There we are. All right, make sure it's on. Throttle lock and choke. Make sure it has fuel, which already see through that fuel tank that it does have fuel. Let's go ahead and fill the primer bulb and pull it over. Runs good, no surprise from a new unit. Up next, we got the HS56. Now this is my original hedge trimmer. This is what I used when I first started out and it has been good to me ever since. So let's go ahead and open it up. We do have a good amount of fuel in there. Let's go ahead and choke it. Let the truck pass by. Okay. Priming it a couple times, three, four times. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Okay, a little bit of resistance on the throttle, which is Come on. Boy, these covers are really a pain sometimes. Anyways, I figured that it would uh, give us a little bit of throttle issue in the beginning, but more than likely all of these units will give us a little bit of throttle issue from being uh, started when they're cold. Let's go ahead and give the FS56 a try. See if it'll fire up. Check the fuel. It does have fuel. And let's go ahead and set it to choke. Prime it. I always pry three to four times if I haven't ran them in a long time. So let's go ahead and fire it up, see if it'll fire. Okay, sounds like the idle just might be low just a little bit, but that is fine. It has passed. Okay, KM131R. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Prime, choke. Oh boy, are we out of fuel? Oh, okay. <laughs> this one is out of fuel. I remember the problem with hanging these up vertical is that they leak out of the car for of some apparent reason. I do not know why. So unfortunately, we will not uh, start the KM 131R. Well, let's see if it'll pop. I see a little bit of fuel in the primer bulb, so let's see if it'll pop at least on choke. Okay, yeah, I think I ran this one completely dry, so. Anyways, moving on down. <laughs> let's try the MSA 200C. 
with no chain on it. Still works. Okay, we have we have a full bar of battery, six months. Wow. Well, we know for a fact that the MSA 200C does not lose battery power when it is plugged in and not being operated. So guys, if you're uh, doing small limbing in your lawn care business, I highly recommend you get yourself a good steel battery operated chainsaw when just needing to cut down a small limb for a client. This is very handy and it does not lose power if it just sits there. So full battery life, I haven't had to charge it since last year. And I hardly use it, but I was using it for a little bit last year, but uh, yeah. Anyways, we have our MS-271 here. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Take the guard off. Now this one was used, I'd say a month or two ago. Uh, it does not have a prime. So let's try to fire this up. The way I like to fire them up safely is just by putting your foot here, holding it, and making sure your uh, chain guard is off. You can keep the guard on if you'd like. I just like to keep it off. You know, it looks like our chain is really loose too. But anyways, let's try to fire it up and run it for a little bit. No surprise there. Chainsaws always seem like they want to start no matter what kind of condition they're in. Anyways, we got the FS90R. This is the final unit of the video. So thank you all for bearing with me. Let's go ahead and see if this one will fire up. I did have to add a new gas tank uh, to this unit. And if you want to check out the video, it'll be right there on the top right corner for you. Let's go ahead and push the throttle all the way. Push it to back on the uh, throttle handle to start. Throw the choke on and prime it. Let's check the fuel. It does have fuel in there, so that's good. Okay, now let's try to fire it up. Smoking a lot. I am the dumbest person in the world. Forgot to take the choke off. Well, let's go ahead and fire it up and run it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm wondering why is it not doing anything at throttle? All right, I will not cut that out, I promise. One of my favorite trimmers right there, FS90R. Great, until I cracked the tank last year. Had to get a new tank, that is fine. Runs good now, so uh, yeah, there it is. Ethanol free fuel, I think, is the dominator, honestly. You cannot beat any, any fuel stabilizer, will not beat ethanol free fuel, I think is number one contender as far as what kind of gas you should run in your small engines. So let me know what kind of gas you run and what you do to stabilize your fuel systems in your small engines. Again, this has been Phil with Phil Small Engine Nation. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you liked the video. I know it took forever and thank you for being patient and sticking around to the end. Uh, again, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you didn't, if you found something wrong or if you just have a question in mind, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will make sure to get to them as fast as I can. This has been Phil with Phil Small Engine Nation. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, God bless you, and we will see you in the next episode.